So the last thing for basics about spinal cord and spinal nerves is that, of course, it's not as simple as just the spinal nerve um, coming out and innervating your muscles or glands or whatever, um, or receiving information from those places. Remember, spinal nerves carry both motor and sensory information. So this image, so of course, it's more complicated than that. We're going to have more divisions. We're going to have something called um, ramuses, which is really rami is plural, um, the dorsal and ventral ramus, rami is plural, and then nerve plexuses or plexi. Um, so I want to look briefly at those and conceptually understand what those things are. We're not going to detail to learn all of the nerve plexuses and such. So this image should look not too scary now. You've got your um, vertebrae here, the bone, the vertebral body. You've got some meninges surrounding the actual spinal cord, gray matter, white matter. And then you've got the entries and exits from that spinal cord. So that's the ventral root in front and the dorsal root in back. The dorsal root, this is sensory information coming in. So the dorsal root ganglion has those cell bodies in here that come from the periphery. And the ventral root is motor information going out. And then those meet to make this spinal nerve. Here's our spinal nerve containing both motor and sensory information. And now we're going to see the spinal nerve itself technically is actually very short. It's going to split into a ventral and dorsal ramus. So ventral and dorsal, just like before, roots are right near the tree, which is the spinal cord, and these rami are out here. So here is the ventral ramus, and here is the dorsal ramus, which of course is going to be going to the dorsal, the backside. The ramus just means a branch. So here's the roots and here's the branches. Um, do dorsal and ventral ramuses, so right now again, they're just splits. The information is splitting into two. Does the ventral ramus, let's just say for example, contain motor or sensory? Both right, because those combined in the spinal nerve, and now the information is splitting. It's not splitting by motor and sensory again, it's splitting about for where it goes. The dorsal ramus goes to the front half of the body. Um, what did I just say, ventral? <laughs> the ventral goes to the ventral lateral, the front surface, um, and the dorsal goes to kind of the skin and muscles of the backside. So, as always, it's helpful to draw this out ourselves. Let's draw this. We are going to have motor and sensory nerves, um, meaning combinations of many axons. And I'm going to draw two neurons that might make up. So here's two separate neurons. These are unipolar neurons that come from the periphery. And I want to draw two of each because, so here's our spinal nerve, contains both motor and sensory. We might have one of these neurons come from the, let's say this is our dorsal back here, from the back region, information from the actual back. And this one receives information from the front, from the ventral side of the body. And same with the motor information. So if we go to look at our motor neurons, we've got two different somatic motor neurons in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. Those neurons are going to all go through the ventral root. They're all going to go through the spinal nerve, but then some might go through the dorsal ramus and some might go through the ventral ramus. So there's that split. Those are the Rami. After that, there is more complexity, of course. The different rami combine to form nerve plexuses. And this is actually the nerves that you think of of what innervate your muscles. We're not going to learn all the different how these combine. I want you to conceptually understand 
how these form in terms of the braids. That's what plexus actually means. And then we're going to be looking in lab at some specific um, nerve plexuses in, in terms of the actual femoral nerve, cervical nerve that are a part of those plexuses. And I just want to have a conceptual idea of how those form. So let's look at the nerve plexuses, the nerve plexus. There are actually four different plexi. I don't actually know if it's plexus or plexi. Um, and again, we're not going to be learning a ton of detail on them, but they are going to innervate like cervical region, brachial region, lumbar region, and sacral region. And then the main thing I want you to know is that these are all formed by an intermingling of spinal nerves. So those spinal nerves, the anterior ramus, for example, of spinal nerve C1, 2, and 3, those three spinal nerves and then the anterior ramus, because that's the branch that all goes to the anterior of your body, are all going to combine to form similar actual peripheral nerves. So that this is braiding that occurs. So it's not like C1 innervates, it becomes the femoral nerve. Well, of course it doesn't because it's in the wrong part of the body. C1 does not become the phrenic nerve. L4 does not become the femoral nerve. Um, so the nerves of the periphery are not just straight up continuations of the spinal nerves. They are reorganizations of the axons um, that follow then different, more complex courses. So axons of different spinal nerve, nerves come together to form these systemic nerves. And this happens at four different places. Um, these four places here. So the word plexus, it refers to this braid, this network. There's other cell bodies. Is part of the plexus itself? No. Here's just one I want to look at more in detail to give you the idea of this. Again, you don't need to memorize any of these combinations of specifics. So here is C4. What is that? That is the spinal nerve that comes from um, the vertebrae, the C4 vertebrae, C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. How many spinal nerves do we have? 31 pairs. Um, this is showing that these what is that, six <laughs> spinal nerves are going to intermingle to form the nerve plexuses. So here would be the, for example, the, what is that, ventral root of C4, the ventral root of C6, the ventral root of C7 are going to braid together. Look at this. They come together in different places. It's like a braid where things come together in different places to form Eventually, way down here, it's going to split again, lots of splits, to form the musculocutaneous nerve, uh, the radial nerve, etc. So again, basically, I want you to know the idea of this, um, that those nerve plexi, the plexuses are made up of the intermingling of many spinal nerves. So when I say something like the ulnar nerve, you have some idea that that came from multiple spinal nerves. And this would be important if you cared about, um, you know, doing testing and function, uh, functioning of nerves and what that meant about spinal cord function, for example. 